everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a video all about the Aero Garden Farm. I upgraded to the XL unit and I'm super excited about it. I started with the Harvest model, which is like a smaller countertop model, and I grew herbs and lettuces on that just on my kitchen counter. And I kind of got really obsessed with hydroponics and growing things indoors, so I'm really, really excited about being able to grow larger things. So my plan with this uh, this unit is to grow cherry tomatoes, peppers, and a larger plants like that. Um, so I thought in today's video I could show you uh, exactly what the Air Garden Farm unit is, uh, unbox it with you, and give you some tips and tricks for setting it up and putting it all together. I did have some trouble assembling it. I'm not sure if that's because I was doing it by myself and I'm not that strong, um, but I figured out finally how to do it. So. I'll share some tips and tricks along the way, and hopefully you will have an easier time. So if you want to learn more about the Air Garden farm units, then just keep watching. Okay, I started by unboxing everything. This is the 12 extra large model. Um, so it has a height of up to 36 inches, so it is quite a big package when it comes in the mail. It's kind of big and heavy. Um, and usually I end up on the floor when I put together furniture, but for the Air Garden, I do think it's a little easier if you set it up on a table so that things are waist high and you don't have to hunch over quite as much. Um, so I recommend just putting a towel down or something soft to prevent scratches and finding like a nice big surface area. Um, so first I took everything out of the box. There's essentially just a couple main pieces. The top where the LCD monitor is, the grow deck uh, where the plants sit, uh, the left and right metal frame pieces, and some base bars on the bottom. And then of course screws, the instruction manual, stuff like that. So starting from the instructions, um, you start with the top of the machine upside down. So essentially we're putting this together starting from the top and working um, in reverse. And you want to make sure that when you're working on the top, the monitor, the screen is facing you. I thought the instructions were pretty helpful because they had comments like, the screen should be facing you, make sure the outlet is on the left, stuff like that. Um, it has actual written text in addition to the pictures, so it is pretty handy. Um, okay, so we're going to attach the left and the right metal sides to the top. When I took out the side frames, I could tell that they were slightly different based on like the power cord placement. But at first I couldn't tell which was left and which was right. Um, and I realized that they are actually labeled L and R on the bottom on that little black plastic piece. So it took me a second to realize that, but yeah, everything, like I said, nicely labeled, good instructions. Um, so you're going to start with two screws on each side. You're going to attach the left to the top. And um, basically that's a total of four screws for the top, left and right. Uh, you want to definitely make sure you attach the washers, those little round circles, before you place in the screw. Um, and then we're going to want to secure the legs underneath as well for extra, you know, security. Um, that's again two screws on each side. So my first tip is to take the flap off the side storage altogether. So you just kind of gently pull down and wiggle to take it off and then that way you can see this into the storage compartment much easier and you can also um, stick the screw like through the top to help tighten. And then we're going to do the same thing on the right side. So two screws on the top. Take off the storage flap and two screws again on the bottom. So once that is all done, you essentially have the left and right sides attached to the top. Now we're gonna uh, work on the bottom. So we're gonna flip over the machine and attach the base bars. The machine is definitely a little heavy, so you wanna be careful if you're doing this by yourself. Um, the base bars are basically extra support for the frame of the air garden, um, but this time at the bottom, and they will be the base for the grow deck to set on. All right, so now here is where I realized that I ran into a bit of trouble. Depending on how you attached the legs to the top, uh, you might find that the legs don't leave you with enough room to slot in the base bars. Sometimes there's too much space and it's too wide of a gap and sometimes it's too narrow. So you can tell here my, by my expression, I'm looking at it and there's just not enough room for the uh, bars to fit in between the legs and I'm trying to like 
you know, pull apart the legs and, and widen the side frames, but I just can't fit the base bars in. So essentially what you have to do is back out the screws that you painstakingly put in and kind of loosen up the machine a bit so that you can wiggle the legs uh, to fit in the base bars. So it definitely takes a bit of trial and error and a bit of elbow grease uh, because essentially the pre-drilled holes in the metal, they don't line up 100% perfectly. Uh, so I do have a couple more tips to make the process a bit easier. So if you have this issue, try widening each of the holes in the base of the machine um, before you even start. And by this I mean put the screws all the way into the hole before you're actually assembling the pieces together. That way you're basically widening the hole a little bit and you're giving yourself a little bit more wiggle room for the pieces to fit together. I found that made a big difference, surprisingly. Um, my third tip is to assemble each screw only about halfway in. So place them in, make sure the screws can fit into the holes, but don't overly tighten anything until like step nine. That way the pieces are connected, but you have some wiggle room to put the structure together. And then at the end, you can, you know, go back and tighten everything really securely. It's a couple days later and I'm done with up to step seven. So basically I have the top attached to the left and right sides on both the four on the base and the two um, base bars at the top. So now the next step is to move it into the final location where you want to place it. All right, now that we've reached step 10, it is so much more straightforward. Um, it's quite easy from here. So you'll want to take the air garden and move it to where you ultimately want it to be. Um, we're going to put water in, so you want to do this before you have to fill it up with like a gallon of water. Place the water bowl over the base metal bars, uh, take off any packing tape, and make sure that the grow deck is aligning properly over the water bowl. So you want to make sure the cords in the back are positioned um, in the back side notches. There's like a little slot for them like this. And then you also want to make sure that the grow deck sits flush over the long pump nozzle inside the machine. And that way you can make sure that each little plant will get enough water. Then you connect the power cords in the back. These cords on the left frame tell the machine about the pump and the water levels so that it can um, not only tell the screen at the top um, an accurate reading, but also for the mobile app. Okay, so now release the light cords and grab the LED light. It's kind of like a thinner um, piece. And at the top of the light frame, you'll see these four rubber power plugs. You can kind of wiggle them out with like your nail and you're gonna gently insert the small metal end of the hanging cord into that opening. And then you're gonna place the rubber back into the hole. And basically that keeps the hanging cord in place, kind of ingenious. And uh, yeah, do that for each of the four hanging cords and then your light is all set up. And if it looks a little lopsided, don't worry. Um, when you power on the machine, everything kind of slowly adjusts so that it's relatively parallel. Now we're gonna actually plug in the lights to the machine. Um, it's gonna connect from outside of the LED light to the plug socket underneath the top on the left side. And one of the nice things about the farm models is they include a trellis system. So chances are you're using the farm because you wanna grow something a little larger and um, plants like a cherry tomato or pepper plant, like they do need a bit more support as they grow. So Air Garden actually gives you some really nice large cords to support the plants. And I'll show you how to attach these right now, but keep in mind you don't really need these until your plants are actually grown. Um, so. It's quite easy. The trellis cords are magnetic. You just kind of click it onto the metal frames of the farm. And then you're going to pinch the little black clips. You push them down so that they have a little gap and you can attach them to the trellis cord. And you can place them at any interval that you want. Um, and I found at this stage that I had three, like two horizontal trellis cords and then three um, vertical cords. So you have quite a bit of... A nice system going on and I also saw that I had some extra bolts and washers so I do like that they give you a little bit of extra tools just in case you like misplace some of them and finally all that's left is to plug in the machine so you'll hear some noise you'll see the lights pop on and basically the farm model is now completely assembled so now all you have to do is start your garden and my goal with the farm was to grow my own veggies so I have here not only the included lettuce and herb kit that came with the Arrow Garden, um, but I also ordered my own seeds. And in my next video, I'll show you how to plant anything you want in the farm um, with the Arrow Garden Grow Your Own Kit.
But for now, I'll leave you with an overview of like how the farm model works. So the monitor up top is really nice and advanced. At a glance, you can see the lights, the water levels, and the plant food schedule. Um, so you can hit quick start to have the machine walk you through setup. And it's basically the same start process as the harvest or the bounty model, so you're probably already familiar with it. Uh, the farm model takes a lot of water, by the way. Try to use distilled water if you have it or if the tap water in your area, you know, has like a lot of hard minerals to it. Um, you can buy distilled or distill it yourself. Oh, and one of the things I really like about the farm model is that you can control the light schedule. So these machines are going to run for, on average, about 15 hours a day. And some people find that the LED lights are stronger than they anticipated. So if you have a room where you can shut the door, then I recommend placing your farm there, um, especially if you think the light is going to bother you. I have mine in more of an open area. So what I did was to set the light schedule to my own preferences. And I find that it's a little... Um, it's just a little bit more like visually easier to understand in the farm model than in the harvest. So you can see here, like I want the lights to be on at night when I'm sleeping and I don't want them to be on during the day. Uh, right now, since I'm working from home, I prefer to have like natural light during the day and for the machine to be off. And that way it's not like distracting or running in the background. So I can say like, I want the lights to start at, for example, 8 p.m. and then they'll end by, you know, it'll tell me like it'll automatically adjust and tell me when it will end in the morning. And, oh, you can also um, check everything on your mobile app if you are one of those people that likes, you know, smart home gadgets. So there's an Arrow Garden app. You download it um, in the App Store, and it's available for both the iPhone and Android. Um, you can program the machine directly on your phone, which is a really nice touch. It will also alert you to, like, low water levels, remind you to add plant food. And I think it's really cute. You can take pictures of your plants, have a little, like, an album of progress pics. So overall, definitely love the Farm 12 X XL. I really am super excited about it, um, especially because I still have the countertop model, so now I have lots and lots of room. Um, I can do a future video comparing the different units if that's of interest. Let me know in the comments if you'd find that helpful. All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope this video convinced you to get the farm because it's honestly amazing and you'll definitely love it. Um, so hopefully my tips helped with the assembly process because once it's all set up, you are just good to go.